This is episode five, a solo episode with me, Tiffany Hinton, and we're talking about what's happening on the Hinton Homestead today on Cultivating Guts. Hello, it's Tiffany, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts, a podcast where we discuss gardening, homesteading, gut health, and following our intuition. I'm so excited to be back with you guys. I've had so many insightful moments and ideas about really important topics, and I'm wanting to share with you on the podcast. Today, we're actually also simultaneously video recording. Hello. So you can check out the video on Spotify or on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Tiffany Hinton. And I've also posted a few new shorts out there. If you're into YouTube shorts, you can check those out. There's going to be a lot more around the homestead of homestead shorts, I guess. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny, right? Hinton homestead in the shorts. I don't know. We'll figure that out. Anyway, going. Uh, so if you're on YouTube or you're on Spotify, hello, hello, I see you. You and you can see me. I've had a lot of fun lately on the homestead the past two weekends, and I want to talk through as we're moving into spring, what does the prep look like? What does the cleanup from winter look like? What's happening on the homestead? And so we'll go through all of that today, and we'll talk about a really fun live event that also is now open to uh, register. So, But before we get started, I'd ask you for a huge favor. Can you subscribe, rate, and review the Cultivating Guts podcast? Send me your screenshot of your review to Tiffany at Cultivating Guts, and I'll send you our free garden planning course. The course t- walks you through all the steps to set up your garden, to plan it out, and to um, actually plan for success. So if you're listening, screenshot also any favorite part, any silly faces I make. If you're watching this on the video, share those with me on Instagram at I am Tiffany Hanson or at Cultivating Guts, and I'll repost those. I love reposting stuff on Instagram from quotes to other home starter things to little reels that I find very interesting or helpful. Um, so you can always check out the repost. They're up in my stories on Instagram. I'm so grateful for you and all of our amazing listeners for helping us grow the podcast. We're in season two and so, so grateful. And I'm also grateful that you share it with more people and I, you continue to, you know, as episodes come across that are like very inspiring for you that you share those with others who could find help or inspiration. So before we head into the show, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Cultivating Guts. We want to talk a little bit about our brand new, new newish, Little Witches Moon Gardening Club. And no, you don't have to be just a little witch. You could be a little wizard. The Moon Gardening Club happens in the north suburbs of Chicago. Once a month, the kids come together and have garden club. They have education. They have music. They have time with pets and animals, farm animals, chickens and rabbits, time in nature, and they learn biodynamic gardening skills. They learn the elements from fire, earth, wind, and water. They learn medicinal properties of herbs along with magical properties of plants. They learn to find their intuition and they have space to create and just play. And it's a beautiful thing. And they're learning sustainable practices that will help heal Mother Earth that they'll be able to use to have a sustainable lifestyle in the future. If you would like your child to join us or to learn more about the Little Witches Moon Gardening Club, visit our website, www.cultivatingguts.com. Sign your kid up today. New seasons and new clubs are the second or third week of every month. Welcome back to Cultivating Guts. So what's happening on the homestead? That's what we're going to talk about today. How do you prepare your own backyard, your own homestead, your own garden for the upcoming season? What can you do to ensure that you've got additional abundance, that your soil's right, and everything is wonderful? That's what we're talking about today. I have been trying to spend more and more and more and more time outside as, excuse me, as the weather continues to increase, the temperatures are going up. We're hitting the 50s some weekends. It's sunny. There's thawing. Like it's muddy. It's beautiful. Love it all. Like nothing is bright green yet. Like the trees are just getting their little buds, which is awesome to see. They're going to, you know, bud out probably in late March. And the daffodils are coming up, things like that. And it, it it's awesome. I love it. So, But at the same time, it is brown. I get it. It's muddy. The plants from last year are still dead. Remember last fall, I said, leave everything where it is. Let the little birdies eat. Let your perennials and your annuals reseed themselves. Don't tear anything out. Like, leave it in the ground. That's part of biodynamic gardening, right? Leave the roots so that the critters and the critters, the worms have something to eat and compost and create more nourishment in the soil during the winter. Like, leave it alone. So in doing that, when you look outside now, 
and it's raining here in Chicago today as I'm filming this and it's gray and it's cold and it's like, look, I'm tired of winter. Look, where's all the beautifulness? It's there, I promise you. It's underneath. All of us have a cycle, right? Just like we have our cycle as women, we have cycles in the moon, we have seasonal cycles. This is that end of winter cycle on the wheel of the year. We just had um, at the beginning of February, we had in bulk, right? The days are starting to get longer. The sun is starting to be out longer. Like spring is coming. Chickens have started laying eggs and that means that they need 14 hours of light, which we're not quite at 14 hours, but it's pretty close. So it is coming. It is. And, and with that comes the beauty, but we have to go through the winter first, right? Whether it's in our personal life or it's in our garden, you got to go through the yuckiness. You got to go through the hibernation. You got to go through the part where the ground just gets to to nourish and compost and decompose and, you know, and just kind of have all of that dead stuff go into it and be absorbed and create the nourishment for the next year's season. And so it's similar in our own lives. I can remember for myself, like from Christmas to the second week in January, read books, sat by the fire, stayed on the couch. I vegged. Didn't do much of anything. It felt great. It was my hibernation season. And then I was like, all right, I'm ready, right? I'm ready to plan. I'm ready to look at seed catalogs. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So that being said, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing on the homestead, what you can be doing at home to get ready, right? And there's there's a lot of different things. So I yes, I told you, <laughs> don't rip anything out last fall, right? Just leave the stuff there. Let it be brown. Let it be sticks and straggly and looking crazy. Don't have the landscaper come and like uh, weed eat it all off, right? Or don't pull it all out. That's not good for the soil. So now what do you want to do? As the time and the weather starts to warm and the snow is diminishing, what you'll want to do in a lot of areas is um, they call it cut and drop. That's what they call it. Um, basically you can start to, without disturbing the roots, don't be yanking stuff out of the ground. Um, you can start to cut the dead stuff off and either go add it to your compost or like in some of my stuff, I was showing the kids at the Little Witches Moon Garden Club two weeks ago. Some of them, the, the dead heads from last year's flowers still have seeds in them. So with those cut and drop, you cut them, drop them right back on the ground where they were so that they can reseed. Or even if you've got children at home or yourself, take those seed pods and like, um, I'm, I'm showing you on camera, <laughs> you're on a podcast. Take those seed pods and massage them in your hand and release the seeds back on the ground so that they can reseed themselves and start to regrow this spring. Uh, the other thing is the cut and drop. You're adding that dead stuff right on top of the soil so that it can decompose and create more nutrients in the soil, more nitrogen and other things. So that's what you want to start doing, right? So I can look out my window and I can see that there's lavender, there's butterfly weed, there's hospice, there's actually um, a whole bunch of, it looks like uh, citrus basil still that's bushy that can all be crumbled up. That'll reseed. The dill, if you have any old dill heads, those will reseed, all of that. The other thing you can be doing is once you get all of that kind of cut and dropped, Cover it with compost. Cover it with either compost if you have a composter on your own garden or farm or homestead. Or you can do like I do. Um, We have a composter we built last year, but it's not necessarily producing enough compost that I need for our growing space. So I buy mushroom compost or um, cow poop. Those are my two go-to things that I will buy. I will spread about two inches of compost over every raised bed over all of the um, areas that need nourishment. So I'll even sprinkle compost back on the Hecate's garden, on the herb beds, but all the raised beds get two inches of compost. Then you can go get straw. Now, I'm going to use straw that was in the rabbit hutch on the chicken coop over winter, and I'm going to spread that then on the compost. You can also do it in reverse. You can put the straw down and then add the compost on top. If you choose to do Compost, straw, compost, because you're going to need to plant, right? Uh, That can work. Uh, The other thing to do is cut and drop, add a layer of like um, straw, whether it's got rabbit poop, chicken poop, or just clean straw. 
then add your two inches of compost. In biodynamic gardening, we're going to plant directly in the compost. Now, what if you're saying, hey, I don't have a raised bed. This is my first year gardening. I got to go rototill my yard. Hold up. Hold up. No rototilling. No rototilling. Don't go buy a rototiller. Don't go rent a rototiller. I knew I hated those as a kid for a reason. Don't go do that. Um, what I'm going to suggest that you do instead is do not disturb the soil. Just leave it be. Start saving those Amazon boxes. And if you're like, I don't got Amazon boxes. Well, I'm sure you or neighbors, myself, and many other people do. Save your Amazon boxes. You're going to build a cardboard barrier. So how does this happen? And this is something I'm going to teach at our Green Witch Garden Retreat. And I'm actually going to show the kids how to do this too at the March uh, uh, oh my goodness, the Marsh Little Witches Moon Garden Club. So what do you do? You basically figure out where you want your new garden to be. You put cardboard laid flat. So unfold the boxes, right? Lay them all flat, lay them flat, lay them flat. Create the space you want. Put your raised bed frame that you're using. We're going to teach you how to build those too at the upcoming retreat. Super easy to do. And you don't have to be a master woodworker to build a raised bed. Uh, you just got to have a little strength, a little girl power. And so you're going to put your cardboard down. You're going to put your raised bed on top. Then you're going to fill the bottom of the raised bed with compost, old leaves. And because we're starting from scratch, right, and you didn't have previous nurture, nourishing soil in your raised bed if you're brand new, you're going to go get some garden soil, organic garden soil, perlite, vermicular light, maybe a little bit of sand, and your mushroom compost and your cow manure. Now, if you got a good friend that has rabbits or chickens, go get some of their um, straw or their hemp bedding that's got the manure in it. And you're going to mix all of that together in a bucket, in a wheelbarrow, in the raised bed itself, and that's going to become your planting material. There's a lot of different recipes when it comes to planting a raised bed, but personally, I've used it for a decade. It's good garden soil, organic garden soil, vermicular light, perlite, compost. That's basically what goes in there. If you're going to do carrots and potatoes and some of that, you need like some, some loose soil. That's why you would add some sand to it. And it'll be perfect. It'll be great. And then you can... Finish the top with a, a layer of compost and plant your seeds, okay? The reason we're planting our seeds in the compost in the Chicagoland area is because compost is warmer. It actually creates heat as it continues to biodegrade. And so it allows us to plant seeds earlier. Now, on my homestead, if you've been watching online or you've been checking it out, we're installing low hoop houses. And I've gotten a lot of questions from neighbors like, why are you doing that? What are you going to build under there? What's going to grow under there? What are those for? Like all different questions from all different people that either garden or don't garden or have an idea what they are, don't know what they are. Um, but why am I doing it? So they're removable the way that we've installed them with the pipe clamps. And then we take the PVC half inch pipe and I make it into a shape of a rainbow and we stick it in the ground and it's got held on each side by a pipe clamp. And in some of the raised beds, they're every three feet apart. In some of them, they're every four feet apart, okay? The reason I'm doing that is I'm covering them with frost cloth. And so I wrote a whole article. You can find it on Natural Awakenings Magazine. So you can go to nachicago.com or Milwaukee's Natural Awakenings Magazine. The frost cloth, you can use floating frost cloth as well. I'm putting the frost cloth over the PVC domes to create space that is protected from frost insulated from the elements to allow me to plant in March. I'm not going to wait till May to put crops in the ground, especially cold, cold growing crops. So now you're like, what? Cold growing crops? What are those? Okay. So certain varieties of seeds germinate at different temperatures of soil. Some seeds need light to germinate. Some seeds need heat to germinate. And some seeds need it to be dark and cold to germinate. And some seeds actually need to be frozen in order to germinate. And now you're probably like, oh my God, this is confusing. I don't want to overwhelm you, but I'll make it very simple. In the seed tray that I use for storage, it says, sow indoors, cold sow, direct sow. Okay. 
Sow indoors means that those seeds probably need light and heat to germinate. So what are those things? Those are like dahlia seeds, peppers, jalapenos need like their soil to be almost 80 degrees to germinate. Uh, Tomatoes, those need heat to germinate. A lot of your citrus, your melons need heat to germinate. And a lot of your herbs need light. Now your poppies, the seeds have to be frozen to germinate. So you basically throw poppy seeds out in the fall for them to grow in the spring so that they live through the winter. Um, Things that need to be cold sowed are okay to plant in March and in April, even if you don't have the frost cloth. That's like your kale and your spinach and your lettuce and your radishes and your beets because they can tolerate cold weather and they're not going to wilt and they're not going to freeze and they're good at that, okay? Things that you want to direct sow, which means that you need the ground to be workable. You need to make sure it's after the last frost. So in Chicago, the last frost this year, according to Farmer's Almanac, is predicted to be April 25th. So I'm going to be planting and planting and planting. Um, I'm so ready to plant now. But like I said, we're going to plant in March under the frost cloth. But direct sow things are like carrots, potatoes, parsnips. Uh, things that are going to root, and because they root, they need to go down, and they're not going to have room to do that in a seed tray, and they're really hard to transplant when they're like that. So anything that's got a big tap root, you, uh, borage is a flower that I'm going to grow this year, and it also has a big tap root, like a dandelion, right? Those have a big tap root. If you're like, what's a tap root? It's that big, long root down the middle. It's like a carrot or a dandelion, if you want to think about what that's a tap root. So those get direct sowed. Green beans, a lot of times people will start them in seed trays, but they're easy to direct sow as well. So are cucumbers. You can start them indoors if you have space, or you can just direct sow them right into the ground. So yes, I put up the PVC hoops, and I'm going to put the frost cloth over them. One of them has frost cloth now. We were testing to see what is the weather that it stays on, comes off, and things like that. Um, So I understand like the dynamics of the wind. But I'm ready to put the rest of the frost cloths up. Now, the second reason to put the frost cloths up, the first one, right, is so I can plant early, so I have produce sooner, so I have a longer growing season. Second reason to put the frost cloth up is to keep the chickens from eating the baby plants. The chickens have been doing their job all winter. They've been out there. They've been digging. They've been eating grubs. They've been eating baby really pullies. They've been eating and eating and eating the, the, the bugs that I don't want to eat my plants. They've been doing their job. They've been pooping as well all over the garden. So I got lots of nitrogen. I got lots and lots and lots. The thing about chicken poop is it has to be, um, it's hot poop, so it needs water. So having it, the snow on it, having the spring rain on it just helps break that chicken poop down. You don't want to just throw direct chicken poop directly on your garden when it's growing. It'll burn the plants. So you want to add in the summertime like the chicken poop to the composter. Rabbit poop is cold poop. You could add it directly to your garden in in season and it won't burn your plants. So second reason is those frost cloths will keep the chickens out of the raised beds and allow the plants to grow. And then once the plants are as big as the chicken or bigger, then it'll be okay to kind of let the frost cloths come off, let things pollinate, let the, the birds and the bees and stuff get to the plants. And then if we'll see what happens, right? This will be my first summer with full-grown chickens in a garden that are sharing a space. But if for some reason the chickens start to destroy stuff or, for instance, attack tomatoes on the vine, they didn't do that last year. But if they do this year, um, then I will have that framing and I can put netting up that will still allow bees and butterflies and stuff to get to the plants but keep the chickens out of the produce so we actually have garden produce, okay? So that's what's happening with the PVC piping. In the greenhouse, oh my goodness, you guys saw back in January, I put the shelving up in the greenhouse so we had places for plants to grow. I planted pots, multiple pots of daffodils. I let the daffodils winter outside. They were given to me, about 100 daffodils. Um, so they wintered outside and then they I brought them in right around Valentine's, no, not Valentine's Day, around the in bulk. I brought the daffodil bulbs inside. And I just let them sit in my office and I started to see little green shoots come out of the daffodils. I was like, perfect. So then I took those out to the greenhouse, put those in pots with dirt and got some buckets 
And we're going to be giving away daffodils for spring flowers to some of the neighbors. I love giving my neighbors gifts. It just makes me feel happy. Uh, so we'll be handing out around Easter time probably daffodils to a lot of our different neighbors. And I got little buckets and we got labels that say Hinton Homestead. So they'll be labeled and marked. And it'll be so cute. And then they can use the bucket later. I'm going to attach a little note so they can put the daffodils in the ground or they can just put them in their garage until next spring and then they'll keep growing. Uh, so that's happening in the greenhouse of trays and trays and trays of seedlings. Um, all of my herbs have come up. I ordered most of my seeds this year, as you guys saw, from Johnny's and then from Jung. Got a few from Prairie Moon, but the most from Johnny's and Jung. And the germination germination rate has been amazing. So, and again, we're using the 512 seed starter mix as well from Johnny's that I have shipped to me. Yes, I get that it's a little pricey. I get that some people are like, oh my goodness, it's $30 in shipping. When every seed that you plant germinates, you're not wasting your money. You're not at all. And then the soil that's in your seed trays, you like transplant, you can add that directly into your garden buds. You can put that in your compost. It's not a waste of money. There's so much nutrients in that soil. So we have, I have to think about this for a second. Um, I've got two top racks in the greenhouse with dahlias. I'm excited to plant and grow dahlias. I planted them from seed. And so they're about two inches tall, the dahlias, and they're in four four inch and six inch pots. Then we have, so that's the top rack. Then there's one, two, three, four, six, and six. So 12 trays with 72 seedlings. I don't even know what 12 times 72 is. Oh my goodness. Tiffany may have went insane with the amount of little plants we have. Uh, let's see here. Calculator says 12 times 70, oops, 72, 864 little baby plants in the greenhouse. <laughs> I have to laugh. Okay, maybe a little bit worse than insane. Anyway, um, and then I have a tray in the greenhouse of, and there's a video as well on, actually it's on our TikTok channel, but um, the chickens were getting sprouts. So I do a full tray with a little bit of dirt and then all the sprouts. The chickens are getting sprouts. I planted blue peas. So for like a uh, butterfly pea tea, the, the bluish purple pea flowers, the pea themselves is poisonous. The plant is poisonous. So we'll have to figure out where we're going to plant those. They won't be anywhere near the chickens or the rabbits, but um, maybe with some of the other poisonous plants we grow because we already grow like foxglove and elderberry and some other stuff that's poisonous. Um, so that's all happening. And so I, like I said, do the cardboard. If you've got a new space coming up, do two inch compost so that you can plant. If you are going to do the, the frost, frost covers or the floating frost cover, you can plant late March, like spring break week, you can put seeds in the ground, especially like cold seeds. If you're not going to do that, you can still put your kale and stuff in the ground in April. And then everything else, wait till like the first week, second week of May, if you're in the Chicagoland area, and then plant your cucumbers, your green beans, your watermelon, your whatever else directly in the ground. If you are somebody that's like, okay, this sounds amazing, but I'm still like lost. I'm still overwhelmed. Hold on. Hold on to the end of the podcast. podcast, And we will talk about how I can help you, okay? Other things that are happening on the homestead. I built Frankie her raised beds. So she designed what she wanted. She's got four two-by-four beds. And then there's a three-by-three three in the middle because we ordered 100 strawberry plants. So that's going to be strawberries. And I'll figure out where to put the rest of the strawberries. That's happening. Um, those are built. The hoop houses are up. The greenhouse is done. The chickens are laying eggs which we did a whole episode, go back two episodes on the podcast and you'll hear about the chicken eggs and how we feed the chickens and our customer list uh, for the chickens is growing for the eggs. It's kind of fun. We still have a wait list for eggs. We get new chickens on March 10th. So you'll see that as well coming. So again, Instagram, TikTok, a little bit on Facebook, a little bit back on Facebook. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. I am excited. I am super, super excited about everything that's coming and just the bloom, the bloom that's going to happen and how everything's going to be just amazing. So, all right, that's kind of what's happening on the homestead. So let's talk about, oh, and I started the garden certification course 
with Gardenary. So I will be a certified garden coach in about three months, maybe a little less, depending on how much time I do my homework and how much time I spend outside. But as long as I keep balance, certified a garden coach through Gardenary. The course has been amazing. If you've never been through anything Gardenary does, like look up Gardenary online. It is amazing. Loving it. The homework. Yes, there is homework. Yes, I spent probably six hours over the three-day weekend just doing homework. But it's awesome and it's fun. So I'm working on building out a three-step process through Gardenary, through the program, to help people have biodynamic gardens that they work and maintain on moon cycles. So lean into the green witch, right? Lean into the green witch. And it will create a successful setup for people with biodynamics, and it will help you have a schedule so you don't feel overwhelmed. And by gardening on the moon cycle, you will be able to have balance in your garden and balance in your life, and you won't have to like have excess maintenance that you have to do. It's going to be beautiful. So that's happening as well. Okay, let's talk what's coming up, right? And this is this is probably a longer podcast because there's so much happening and I'm excited about it. My nose is starting to drip. I apologize if you're watching the video and I keep touching my nose. Um, so what's coming up? The Green Witch Garden Retreat. It is there. It is live. Um, I just sent the link out to friends only. We do have people registering already, so I will tell you it's going to be limited to 40 people. So I will get the link as well posted publicly. And if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, where's that link? Where's that link? Where's that link? Um, shoot me an email or send me a message on Instagram and I will get you the direct link until I have it posted publicly. But I want to open the retreat up to my friends first. I want people that I know are just going to jive and gel and love it because I built it with them in mind. So I really want to – I built it with our community in mind, really. So the whole retreat is from 9.30 to 4.30, and it's it's an immersion retreat. It's about connecting with Mother Earth. So we're going to start the retreat out with tea and fruit and just kind of like have a short little breakfast if you hadn't had breakfast before you got there. And then we're going to start with breath work and movement. And I'm – Nervous and excited for this, right? I'm not like a certified breathwork person, but I have been to enough. I can do it. Like I led breathwork, assisted with leading breathwork and um, sadness at the last retreat I was at. So we got this, but we're going to, we're going to ground in first with the breathwork and the movement and like get deeply connected to mother earth. And then we're going to use that connection to mother earth to create our sustainable gardens to create sustainability for our family and to create the world we want where they're eating plants that are nourishing and organic and create the sustainability so every year we have an abundant garden and it's just in we're gardening in tune with mother earth and with the moon cycles so we'll start with the the movement and the breath work and then we're going to dive right in and it's going to be like a full like i said immersion day right I'm going to teach you about biodynamic gardening. How does it work? We'll walk around the homestead. We'll see it in life. We'll see what's happening. Um, we'll learn about gardening with moon cycles and setting up a moon cycle garden calendar and planner so that if you're a planning person like me, like you're a Virgo or a Capricorn, or you got to like have a list, you'll have your list. It's pretty simple. There's four phases of the moon. There's four things you do in your garden every month. Pretty simple. We'll lay all that out. We're going to actually plant seeds because the retreat is on Earth Day, April 22nd. It's There's still enough time to plant some seeds, just start them in trays, and then plant them outside in a month later in May or the first week of June and give those little seedlings a good start. So we'll be doing so, – and it will also give you the skills. So next year you're like, hey, I got this. I know how to start my seeds indoors. I'm good to go. Um, and so you'll learn that skill as well if you've never done indoor seed starting. But we're going to do that. You'll have your um, – supplying all the trays, the seeds, the dirt. And we'll be using that 512, my favorite thing to start seeds in. And then we're going to um, do some design and have, learn about companion planting and really design out what are you going to grow this year. And I'll get the seed catalogs out and share them with everybody. And um, then I'm going to give you some power tools, <laughs> which I laugh because that's a little bit scary. And it's also um, empowering. 
For some people, they'll feel intimidated. For other people, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, man, I got this, right? And uh, I'm going to give you some power tools, and we're going to build some small raised beds. So everybody's going to build a two-by-four, not a two-by-four piece of wood, but two foot by four feet, which is going to give you eight square feet of growing space, which depending on how you plant can be a lot of growing space for a garden of herbs, a salad garden, a pickle garden. Like we can think about different types of gardens. If you do square foot gardening, it gives you eight square feet to grow eight different kinds of plants, eight different varieties. If you do uh, gardening like Gardenary teaches for kitchen garden, um, you can use that that eight square feet all season long because we're constantly pulling, reseeding, pulling, reseeding, and there's a way to do it. We'll talk about that at the retreat to set all that up. Um, we got a catered lunch coming from Majana's Home Kitchen, so gluten-free catered lunch and then also a snack in the afternoon, and then we're going to do open networking and connecting because I want the community to become tighter. I want us to become knitted together because if we're going to create a sustainable world that's going to save Mother Earth and give our families natural nourishing food, we got to be a community. You can't do it by yourself. You got to have people to ask questions to. You got to have people to talk to. And so I, I've built in time for us to actually get to know each other, to do a little bit of that open networking, to find a new bestie friend um, or second bestie friend, right? Uh, and just kind of like come together. After the retreat, I will have a couple of special offers out there for those that want to continue to connect throughout the garden season. So that we'll talk about at the end of the retreat. And that's something I'm going to be building as well as I go through my garden certification. I'll get it all built out, laid out, and have like pathways that go with it and the curriculum and stuff. But it's going to be fun. So we'll drop the link for the Greenwich Garden Retreat April 22nd. It is on Earth Day. It's a Saturday in north suburbs of Chicago in Prospect Heights. Um, I'll drop the link in the show notes. It'll come out in the email as well, guys. And you know, if you're like listening to this, you're meant to be there. There's a reason you listened to this podcast. Come join us at the retreat. You would not have, the universe would not have like set you up and said, hey, go listen to this podcast unless this message was for you. So if you're hearing this, go sign up for the retreat. Okay. Link is below or you can find the link on uh, www.cultivating.com. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Share with me what your favorite part was and when you're going to add the compost to your garden. Like as you're adding the compost to your garden, take a selfie, tag me on Instagram. I will reshare that sucker for you, that photo. I am like, yes, yes, yes. Like go do the biodynamic garden thing. Ask me any questions. I'm here for you and I am excited to see your benefits. Satnam, love you guys. So if you love this episode, share it with your friends. Send it to anyone who may have. Love this inspiration and information that we shared. To get my newest book, The Ultimate Green Witch Garden Planner, you can check it out on Amazon, on our Etsy store, Lily and the Green Witch, or on my website, www.cultivatingguts.com. And I will tell you, if you come to the Green Witch Garden Retreat, you'll get your own copy of my newest book. So... Um, we also want to let you know about this brand new live event, right? I've got two live events up and coming. The first one we briefly talked about on the podcast, the uh, Greenwich Garden Retreat, April 22nd, live, live event, right? You have to come to my homestead, 9.30 to 4.30, all day retreat, meals, food, everything included, all your supplies. You're going to go home with a garden basically in your car to just put together, Um Second live event we have coming up is Sunday, March 19th. It is the kids. So this is the children's ages 6 to 14, the Little Witches Moon Garden Club. We currently have eight more spots available for the March class. So if you're club meeting, if you're interested in that, you can check that out at www.cultivatingguts.com. That is also hosted on my homestead. The children have a chance to interact with the chickens, the rabbits, the cats. They get an education. They learn about medicinal properties, herbal properties. In March, the kids are building mini raised beds. They are mixing their soil in preparation to put in their raised bed. And they're also making garden soap uh, with goat's milk. So lots of what I call witch crafts because they're crafts made by little witches, not anything else. They can put their own magic in there, their own infusions, their own herbs, and they get to create. And so you can sign up for the Little Witches Moon Garden Club 
on our website, www.cultivatinggutts.com. You'll also see everything you need to get started with growing and gardening, including our gardening masterclass. And you can sign up for a consultation with me to learn more about our three-step process and program that we have to help you get gardening with sustainability and moon cycle gardening at home. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time on Cultivating Guts.